A couple of broader points, I think. Um, the, the integration of mechanisms like certifications or codes of practice or standards into this whole, into the data protection policy environment has a very, very long history. It goes back a long time. Um, and I can remember panels at this conference back in the 1990s, Stuart, Stuart, on these very, very, very issues. And although the technology has changed and we're now talking about AI, the governance issues are actually pretty much the same, in my judgment. Um, how do you get companies to do the right thing? And how does that right thing then integrate with existing regulatory structures? I regard this as a practice of co-regulation. It's not self-regulation, it's co-regulation, where the uh, market incentives, existing or prospective market incentives are leveraged in ways that can help regulators do their job and thereby help individuals and help, indi and, and, and help fundamental rights. Um, I may be straying a bit from your question there, but I just, a couple of other points I wanted to make. I think uh, uh, over the years, having observed this debate and written about it, I think there's a number of reasons why certification has not taken off in the way that it was perhaps envisaged it might do 25 years ago. I think number one is that there's a lot of confusing terminology that circulates around this policy community uh, without proper definition. Um, sorry to be an academic, but that's what I am. Um, <laughs> codes of practice, standards, seals, codes of conduct, a lot of those words are used somewhat vaguely and indiscriminately without real proper definition. Um, I think also another big problem here is certification to what, right? Now Sebastian's gonna talk about certification to the GDPR, so we've now got some real clarity there. But over the years, there's been a number of <coughs> certification mechanisms to different standards, which don't necessarily say the same thing, right? Um, and certification of what? Certification to what? Certification of what? And I make a distinction between an organization's policy, what they say they do, their procedures, the means by which they might try to do that, and a certification of their practices. And in order to ensure that they do what they say and say what they do. Now, a lot of companies, in my judgment, are quite okay to have a certification of their policies or procedures, et cetera, but resist the auditing that's necessary in order to, in order to practice it. So I think there's some confusion there. I think over the years also, there's been a certain amount of skepticism of these mechanisms. <clears throat> Firstly, certainly by NGOs and consumer groups who see that this is a way, this, the, this is a, the, the individual, the person whose personal data is, you know, the, the real issue here and the fundamental right is somewhat excluded from the process. This is about companies. This is about companies' ability to reduce their risks. And the poor individual, the data subject, is not really in this debate. They might be affected positively or negatively at the end of the day, but they're not really in the debate. This is a, this is a matter for, for companies, number one. Um, and secondly, I think there's been a certain amount of skepticism by regulators. I think that might be changing. How do you therefore reconcile the regulatory compliance investigation functions with whatever certification models, methods have been approved? Um, should they be giving advice on certification? Should they be using these mechanisms as compliance tools, etc.? So a lot of those questions are, have been around for a very, very long time. I think from my perspective of this debate, there's a certain amount of clarity now, big developing clarity about how they should be, they should be worked out. Um, but um, for this to work now, I think it's important to sort of understand where we've been, the history of this, and to ensure that the lessons of the past and the mistakes of the past are not repeated in the future.